I want to elaborate a little bit more on seismic waves from my first video, uh, specifically P waves and S waves, and explain to you why S waves cannot travel through a liquid. And if you recall, P waves are longitudinal waves, um, very much like a compression wave. So in other words, you know, if you're not sure what a compression wave is, it's a lot like um, sound waves so you know if, if you don't understand that then you should go back and look at my video about sound waves um, so anyway let's say let's say we have a solid and all the particles of a solid as you know are very tightly packed together and so a P wave travels like a compression wave um, and it's longitudinal where uh, the energy of the wave will strike this particle and then it's going to travel to the next, and then to the next, and to the next, and to the next, and so on. And the energy just continues on from one particle to the next. And that would be an A solid. Now, if it's a liquid and the particles are further apart, the same result happens. So if you know, the wave begins and it strikes this wave, it's going to travel and strike the next one and travel and strike the next one and the results are the same so the P wave will travel through both a solid and a liquid however the S wave when we draw the same set of particles for a solid should have made them connect a little bit better um, so if we we have it we have it as a solid and again, the S wave travels um, as a transverse wave, and it's going to go up and down like this. All right. So the wave is going in this direction, or the 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 energy is going that direction, but yet the the wave itself is going to be perpendicular. So it's going to go this way, and it's going to go that way. All right. So it's going to go at right angles to the direction of the wave or the energy and so here um, you know if, if you imagine this is like a, a, a chain or you know a, a necklace of beads if I raise this side up the rest of the chain will also raise up won't it and then if I snap it down if I snap it back down then everything else will also snap down and I hope you can imagine it because I can't really draw it so because these are all connected because they're all connected and you know because it's a solid that if you um, you know move one particle the rest of the particles will follow along with it just like snapping a jump rope and so the S waves will travel through a solid however if it is a liquid and the particles are further apart. Well, if I do the same thing with this particle, nothing's going to happen to this one because we're not connected. And so, so this is going to move, and nothing's going to happen to this one. This one doesn't care. It has no. It's not compelled to travel or follow along with this one because there's no there's no connection here. And so this particle will travel forward, and you know I can it might travel back I don't know but it will have no effect on on the particles next to it so the energy won't travel and so um, the S waves do not do not travel through do not travel through a liquid and in the next video because this is already um, four minutes long um, in the next video I'll explain why um, P waves and S waves tell us um, because of this fact um, because that S waves don't travel through a liquid, um, how we know that the Earth's core is solid and the Earth's outer core is a liquid, and you know what we know that uh, what the Earth's interior is like beyond our crust. So um, I will see you on the next video. Remember that P waves will travel through both a solid and a liquid. S waves will travel through a solid, but will not and cannot travel through a liquid. All right, see you on the next one.